Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes offers over 50 unique actions, some being fairly balanced, and others that can completely break the game. After hundreds of hours gathering these actions, combining the best abilities, classes, and spells, I'm ready to take on the game, but with a twist. All this power comes at a cost. My life force will drain with every move I make. In Three Hopes, certain weapons and abilities provide massive stab boosts without the cost of your health. If I'm not careful, I could self-destruct as soon as I step onto the battlefield. And just to make things even more intense, I'll be playing on the hardest difficulty and class mode, meaning one wrong move could mean losing a unit for the rest of the game. With that in mind, let's get into it. Alright, so my goal is to go from Eastern Galatea territory all the way to Tealtian Plains, and finally settle the score with the Immaculate One. To prepare, I cooked a few meals to boost my warrior specials and awakening attacks, which are perfect for crowd control and targeting stun gauges. For the first level, I equipped the Seasoning Set, which lets me use the unique action one for the books. It increases my attack power and range based on how long I hold the attack button, but it wasn't easy. I had to dodge and weave through powerful enemies like Swordmasters that bombard me as soon as I got within range. Honestly, my my warrior and awakening specials carried me through this one. I'll follow your lead. I got you now. The strongholds, Alex. Relying on these spells was an effective strategy, but it was also very time consuming, so going forward I took a more defensive approach, switching to the Dancer class. With its versatility in both physical arts and magic, I could stagger large enemies with the magic art Thoron. It was effective and didn't drain too much health or weapon durability, allowing me to capture all the strongholds and clear western Gautia territory. <laughs> Want to show them what we've got? Yes! I'll give it my own! I won't run away! No, not yet! Later I faced a restriction. Only male units could be used in this territory I can't name. So I switched back to the Azora class and equipped in Maximum Ambulation, which increases attack speed the higher the hit count. I paired this with Astro to break guards and Mortal Struggle to expose the stun gauges with each hit, though it did sacrifice some of my defense. It was risky, but I made it through. This stronghold's in danger. Keep the enemy away from it. For this last level, all I had to do was defeat Seven and Flame to open up the gates that would eventually lead us to the final boss. Beforehand, I'd given the seasoning set back to the Azura class and switched out the Dancer's unique ability to Divine Pulse, which allows me to freeze time. Using the combinations from the previous level, everything started off fairly well. Watch out! He's going for the strongholds! You are formidable! Out of the way! After I defeated the set, I made my way over to Flane and used Divine Pulse to freeze everything and did what I could to finish her off. Unfortunately, this was when one of my units died off screen. With this, I had to restart from the very beginning of the level. I really didn't want to do something like this again, so I decided to deploy any units I wasn't able to control to any allied strongholds and have the much stronger NPCs do some of the missions in the background. After defeating Seth and Flame for the second time, I switched over to Dimitri and engaged the Archbishop. Beforehand, I swapped out Dimitri's regular unique ability for maximum ambulation allowing me to play soccer with the Archbishop before she got tired of it and transformed into the Immaculate One. The Immaculate One had a lot of attacks that were very hard to dodge, and I almost lost a couple of units because of this. It took a while, but I was able to beat the Immaculate One, using all my warrior specials to both avoid unavoidable attacks and deal a decent amount of damage. <laughs> Oh, 
overall, I would say using the stronger abilities are worth it if you're good at a more defensive play style. Personally, I prefer a consistent mix of offensive and defensive play. That being said, does consistency really matter if you're trying to do things such as 100% of the game as fast as possible? To answer that question, I tried to get as many achievements as fast as possible in this video. On that note, thanks for watching, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see going forward.